New for 96. With your hosts, Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. If I'm honest, the other day, uh, mm-hmm. I was surprised that you didn't end the night by falling in the pool. <laughs> if we'd been sitting closer, I certainly would have. As so many nights end when you come to visit my house, but I don't have a pool, so you just end up in a pile of leaves. Right. Yeah, I don't know why you must stack the leaves so high I know. outside of your doorstep. That's where the centipedes live. No, uh, I saw no, I saw I saw a centipede yesterday. Oh God! You live like in a jungle, spiders, centipedes, birds. Yeah. We right. don't have none of that. We don't have none of that around here. Right in the city, um, I do have. It, I don't have centipedes. I have millipedes, which are. What is the difference? I think centipedes are deadly and huge. They are not centipedes. The centipedes can be small. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. What am I, a doctor? Um, yeah. I saw a large centipede in my house once, like six years ago. And it was, and I say large, I mean, it was like four inches long or something. That's enormous. I don't it know what was. you're talking about. Anything that anything that, that is visible to the human eye, like without a microscope, is already too big as far as an insect But did you ever see, like, in, a, in like a museum or something as a kid, like, I remember them having, or like a zoo, I guess, they would have a, uh, like, a adult wild centipede where it's like a foot long and oh, it's crazy. God. No, it's that's terrifying. too much. Like yeah. I watched that documentary arachnophobia and that was enough for me to form yeah. multiple phobias. Uh, right. All at once. Yeah. So and that only, and those only had eight legs. We're yeah. now we're talking a hundo, uh, hundo well, legs. Millipedes, I guess means a thousand legs. Um, yeah. I thought it was million, but I'll take a thousand. No, it, it, they're like tiny. They're mm. maybe at most an inch. Um, okay. And but when they crawl inside, they dry up and die. And so during the summer, uh, like they would just kind of crawl into the house somehow. And then I would step on one, and it would like turn to dust, which is really gross. Um, and I think it's coming. The ice is melting into the shape of like an anvil. It's very weird. Oh, that is weird. I thought you were going to say there's a centipede in my drink. <laughs> But I'm I'm too busy no, to remove there was it. I'll just there drink was. around it yeah. yeah um I think my the millipedes uh that I get during the summer are coming from this one bag of soil that has been outside in my backyard for like two years now and I've been told that soil goes bad and so I need mm. to get rid of it but the bag has become so brittle that I'm afraid if I lift it it will just like rip or disintegrate. And then I'll be covered in millipedes, and oh that my God. will be the end of me. Anyways, I have a lot of very rational fears, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, my therapist uh, jokes often that I pay for his boat repairs. Uh, this is where we'll post the picture of Niles with his briefcase full of bug repellent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that, was you, a, that was a good gag. You kid, but it's like me on the Hill Country rally with my assortment of uh, wipes. Yeah, I was referencing that recently. Uh, anyway, do we have some real topics? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, okay. Hard to say. Um, yeah. Anyways, how are you? Fine. I'm I'm good. How about you? I'm doing all right. Nothing has changed since I saw you this morning. <laughs> yes, we got tacos and coffee. We did get tacos and coffee. Uh, we both drove muddy Lexuses, Lexuses, um, to the cantina. Um, yeah. One difference is that I did try to wash off the mud. Um, so we had like a impromptu uh we got coffee with a mutual friend on friday former guest former guest testarossa tom testarossa so tom. last last week uh we met for coffee we had our three porsches and we were gonna go to east downtown to take a picture or just do a little like short urban drive and uh the spot near some shipping containers that he picked out uh, was like all in shadow, but the opposite side that was in the sun was in was adjacent to this giant lot of mud, and it had some water in it and stuff. And so, with the 
Porsches. We just continued on and kept driving. But I guess this week it was like, oh, what if we went back there with off-roading vehicles? Yeah. And so your Land Cruiser, Tom's Land Rover Defender, Newer 2021. One. Yeah. And uh, I had the Sport Cross just for support, which was almost needed. Although I did get stuck briefly, you but I can't just take pictures. D- you got stuck as soon as you like got to the site. <laughs> Yeah, because I got there like five minutes before you guys, and I was yeah. stuck when you arrived. <laughs> but I was, because last week when it was dry, we had like driven like onto the um, like as accessible like ramp up yeah. to the sidewalk where there is like on the, loose cor- on the street corner. Yeah, on the street corner, I had driven up that. We had driven up that last year and parked in the gravel, and it was like, oh, this is not going to be a good picture. So we kept going. But in the Sport Cross, I did this, except the difference, it was wet, and the soil is like clay. Yeah. And so I, as soon as I get onto this wet, muddy clay, just two wheels on it, and I'm completely stuck. You were and disabled I'm immediately. Yeah. I w- yeah. My rear tires were spinning in the my IS300 Sport Cross. Um, with the traction control on it, it could, did not know what to do. And then I turned the traction control off and just floored it until I was exiting, until I was out of the mud, and yeah. that seemed to work. It did. You were, you like floored it and like shot out of the mud. And I, I thought you were going to shoot out into traffic uh, because you just dislodged yourself so quickly from there. Yeah. Um, it, I knew that if I was going to shoot out, like I wasn't going to shoot directly out straight backwards i was more worried about like flooring it while going backwards and it just sort of squirms into the right or left because it is very unpredictable yeah but uh it it worked out yeah and then i parked on the street you parked on the street like a Uh, sane person and then watched you get stuck for (laughs) a far greater (laughs) amount of time yes so this Uh, feels don't worry this was well documented oh god uh the photos make me look very heroic because the wheels are spinning but little do people know there was there was very little momentum happening there was yeah there was no forward momentum yeah uh and so it was it had just rained and so this field was like properly muddy and this is the first time you know this is the first suv i've owned and you know i wanted to learn how to use uh, all the four-wheel drive capabilities. And I'd read up on it, but in <laughs> practice, things are very different. And I actually didn't realize how squirmy it would be. Like, it is... There is just, like, constant movement. I, I imagine it's just like driving uh, on ice. Uh, only you... Well, maybe it's like driving in snow where you can, like, form divots and get stuck in them. And mm-hmm. so that's what happened to me. I, I put it on high suspension uh engage like the um uh the low range gearbox and uh i was on my way but i i hit the center diff lock button and nothing happened like no lights um came on the dash but i thought it was engaged anyways but shortly (laughs) thereafter um i got myself like stuck in a rut and as soon as i tried to you know power my power my way out of it the traction kept kicking in and like i could not with irony i could not get any traction uh and it's because the center diff lock uh was not engaging because it had been seized from like years of non-use because you know it's an lx470 so i'm sure the previous owner had never actually engaged it um and that's the only way to turn off the traction control uh from the cabin without like any sort of manipulation and so I was, I just kept rocking back and forth in this rut. Uh, and we were, you know, thinking about, Tom was thinking like he might be able to push me out, but it's a brand new Defender and I had like a tow hitch and I was like, I don't know. Like that doesn't seem like a good mm-hmm. idea. And anyways, I eventually rocked myself out of it. And then the center diff lock eventually did, uh, after we got out, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and I drove forward for like a few feet. Uh, when I was actually able to get forward momentum, it finally engaged. But a it's almost like late. a bicycle gear where it needs like the movement of yeah. the wheel to like yeah. catch. I to, watched a video. Yeah, I catched it. I watched a video of how it works, and basically, yeah, it's not like instantaneous. Like it needs to be able to spin in a certain way, and then things oh. click into place. Um, it's all very like it's pleasantly mechanical, 
Um, versus I mean, things were spinning all over the place when I was watching. <laughs> yeah, I got I did get a lot of decorative mud on the car. So so yeah, your uh, your tires are decidedly street. Yeah, uh, street. They preferred. are all seasons that uh, they're basically from the dealership, the uh, Bridgestone duelers. Uh, and so. then, yeah, so those filled up with this clay. And like I said, this clay was, I mean, it was it was really sticky yeah. stuff. It's, it's very thick. And when it dries, it's like, it's basically like cement almost. Yeah. Um, cement. I realized that it cut short a little bit. So sticky and thick, like cement. The tea is very important. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, <laughs> but uh, off-road tires aren't necessary. I mean, like semen. Yeah, <laughs> yes, if you will. I'm glad we're still on this because that's usually my humor. But, um, but you don't necessarily need off-road tires. I mean, we were just we were just kind of messing around and not actually doing any. No, I mean of you don't need off-road tires, but like in mud, like. It's yeah. The tires, like once they fill, once they become like filled with yeah, yeah, mud, then then it's like you know it's it's but it's tough. Tom's car, uh, the Defender, had no, issues. had no issues. It was also on um, all seasons, and uh, like the four wheel drive. I I forgot to ask him like what mode he had it on because I know that you can manually select the terrain or you can set it on like the smart. Uh, the smart mode, and it'll just kind of figure it all out as you go. Mm. Um, but his air suspension works so fast. Like, I've never seen um, air suspension adjust that quickly. Like, it's just really, like, push a button, and then two seconds later, it's in its highest mode or lowest mode. Wow. Uh, but I was impressed. Um, so the Land Cruiser got stuck, and the Defender... Uh, yeah, to be he, fair, he, he was able to he was able to use all of his four wheel drive system, but yeah, right, yeah, he made it look pretty easy. Um, so I had this happen in the Prius once, huh? The same thing as what happened to me in the Sport Cross, where I was, but it was because I was at the uh, truck event in Central Texas. So yeah. I was shooting, and it like downpoured, and I was parked in a grass lot, which became mud. Yeah, and so to leave, it was like the traction control was coming on and I just couldn't do anything. And you know, the tires are so tiny on that yeah, car. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, but turning off the traction control and just flooring it, it somehow, man. And worked at that type of event, having to flag down help, uh, <laughs> yeah. would have been interesting. Um, yeah, no, that is the worst. I, because we live in the city, uh, like, and especially with the cars that we normally have, um, at least, prior to SUV ownership, um, there was never no, there was never any reason like to get stuck anywhere because we don't have snow. We don't like the streets don't get muddy. And so you don't really like, we don't have experience with like, uh, alternate traction, I guess, other than gravel or, uh, asphalt. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, there is much to learn, I guess, or maybe there's not that much more. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, what else could there be? Yeah, what else could there be? Uh, uh, well, we're moving towards like I, I like that it's a little bit old school. Like the um, the hundred series still has like a uh, manually a, like a manually selected four by four like gearbox versus like the Defender, which is all push button and computerized. Um, and it's both uh, kind of cool that it's mechanical because you can hear things like. Um, clicking and moving as you're moving the lever, but it's also kind of frightening because sometimes, like, you can, in an automatic, grind a gear, um, <laughs> like, uh, especially in uh, low range where it's like a different ratio, so it's no longer one to one; it's like one to four or something. And so, uh, when you give it a little bit of gas, the wheels will still spin even after you've let off in, like, when you're stationary. And so if you put it into park uh, before the wheels, basically before the uh, um, uh, transfer gate stops spinning, uh, you can like grind it. So I did that once like while I was stuck in the mud. Um, but it's just kind of interesting that like of just how manual it is. And it's not that old of a car. Although I guess it 
technically was, or I don't know if it's the same gearbox as uh, what was in the 80 series, but anyways. Uh, Kevin pretends like he has just put on his, uh, <laughs> his boring glasses. They are literally glasses with eyeballs drawn on them when he doesn't care about a topic. And anytime anyone talks about, anytime anyone, being me, talks about anything Land Cruiser related, he turns into a skeleton and yeah. crumbles to dust. Did you see this uh, Boxster 25 years? You see this? You hear about this? Speaking of, <laughs> yeah, speaking of old uh, cars, I did hear about this <laughs> because I put this topic on the on the list. Oh, did you? Did oh, you? maybe. It's hard to say. Okay, so it's cool. Yeah. But it's yeah. also kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a shame because it's it's one of these things where it's like, you know, slow clap Porsche. Cool. Like, you got it. Oh, nope. You kept going. Um, because It's cool because, like, the you know, it's a... It's, what is it? So, it's, a, it's a 718 Boxster that yeah. is celebrating the original Boxster by... Or celebrating the 25th anniversary, and it is trying to approximate a look of the like concept. 1994 concept yeah. car, so, 1993 Boxster concept, which is silver uh, with so the it red has, interior. It's, a, it's basically a GTS 4.0 with some gold accents and different wheels. Yeah, and, and a hundred grand price tag. Yeah, and uh, what is it? It's neodyme is the material. So the uh, Bronze color, neodyme, and uh, I mean the wheel combination and GT silver metallic is like a little bit warmer, um, mm -hmm. and it looks really good, and it so that kind of makes sense. Like that, this combination, the whole idea is that it harks back to uh, that original concept. But then, and it's called the Boxster Twenty Five. Uh, it's called the it's yeah it's called the Boxster Twenty Five. Years. Yes. Years is lowercase. I'm on the Porsche Newsroom site. That's what it's oh, called. Oh, that is weird. I just noticed that it, <laughs> Years is uh, title capped. Um, yeah, that is weird. Uh, but, like, so this looks good. But then they offered in, like, two other colors. So you can get it in deep black metallic or Carrera white metallic, which then negates, I feel like, the whole concept. If the thing is just a trim exercise shouldn't the tr like you should have just limited to the trim that actually Although makes I the concept agree, make sense. I think that like both black and gold and white and gold would work better visually than this silver and gold. Yeah, maybe. Uh but then like then the then there's no point to the Boxster 25 years, which by the way, I I don't like the badges anyways that come on these anniversary edition cars. Um like I just think of the 40th anniversary uh, 996, which has like just like a very, cr like very chromed badge on the dash, uh, and it just it looks like someone bought that from Pep Boys. So and these wheels it. are really interesting. Yeah. They're really different than anything like Porsche has done in like 30 years. Yeah, they look. Uh, I mean, they look nothing like the wheels that were on the Boxster's concept car. Nope. They look almost like... Uh, Are they two? I oh, know it's this one piece. They almost look like cup ones. Mm, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's little a very bit. chunky, blocky... I mean, it looks like an aftermarket wheel, and I don't mean that in a bad way, yeah, but it, it doesn't look like, like a Porsche a, factory wheel. It almost looks like a TE. Um, yeah, it, it has, I was thinking it does have like a, a Volk look to it. Yeah. Um, which it, I mean, it looks as good. a as a I I'm curious how this would look on a 911 if it was like yeah. guard red with these wheels in silver as yeah. like a as like a kind of a cup one throwback. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I would rather have just a GTS in the color I want. Yeah. And put on aftermarket wheels. I <laughs> if I wish, wanted an aftermarket yeah. wheel. I kind of wish instead of like coming out with this as a special edition, although I'm sure it'll sell out. Very quickly. Uh, I wish they had just, like, if you want to get, like, these uh, bronze accents, that's the 25 years, like, package only available for this year. And then just yeah, call it the GTS um, with the 25 years trim package or something like that. But anyways, yeah. it, there's nothing wrong with the car itself. It's just... No. Um, not, not, not opposed to it at all. I'm, 
Always it, happy to see more celebration of these naturally aspirated yeah. boxsters as well. Yeah, it's just the it, the thing that we complain frequently about, which is like the marketing exercise aspect of it um, sours it just a little bit. Um, but not that that matters, I guess. And it starts at 88. Okay. Nine, so not what's that weird is oh, I no, want... Yes. Anyways, go I ahead. want to say... Okay, so I'm looking at this photo of the badging. because Because I ask because on the... 718 Boxster Spider, it's just called the 718 Spider. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if they removed Boxster. I do not pay a lot of attention to 718, so I'm not the biggest fan. Yep. But the, uh, the 718 Spider, they took Boxster out of the name, which was odd. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, maybe maybe because it would have actually been too long. No such thing. It There is already so much back there with the, the Porsche bar... And then 718. Oh, I guess they do. Yeah. So 718 Spider. Mm hmm. Uh, I can't imagine. Like, it would have been 718 Boxster Spider. Maybe they just really would have run out of, like, they wouldn't. No, they couldn't. space. I don't no. know. Maybe there is an actual letter count that they have to adhere to. There would just be so many letters back there, characters. Minimum of 30. Yeah. I'm looking at letters. this, like, 718 Boxster T. I don't know. What do you think about, like, would you, if you got a 718, would you debadge it? Would you debadge at least 718? Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyways. So, um, yeah, I haven't paid a lot of attention to 718s in general, just because, yeah, there's such a lack of enthusiasm for uh those engines but i mean they are changing them uh right yeah i mean this one has the 4.0 which yeah. is very cool yeah so it's sort of a return to form um which is nice uh and so they just came out with a base take on which is yeah. kind of interesting yes uh i like that idea i never even thought about that like that they needed to introduce um a cheaper model necessarily but that it Almost seems, I'm sure, I mean, there is, all-wheel drive has a use, but then, you know, if you live in a climate like Houston and you get, like, an absolute base model take on, like, that seems like it'd be kind of a little bit more engaging, a little bit more fun. Yeah, well, and definitely, you know, a different category of car. It's like, yeah. you know, it becomes attainable to more people, and, and especially as a lease or something. And they, I mean, when the when the Taycan was debuting in the states or not debuting but when it was arriving in the states like i think they announced this for china and yeah. we were like you know we didn't know if it would come to america so yeah i think it starts at 79 grand yeah so that's like you know a hundred uh not a hundred but 80 grand less or something like that than a normal tycan turbo yeah or or the four, the tycan 4s i think is like in the 120s yeah yeah no i mean um, like that makes it pretty competitive um, I don't know what these specs are, like if they have downrated the power or anything. I mean, I think it's less power because it's not as many motors, but I think the range is not significantly worse because you're not yeah. expel using as much. That makes sense. And uh, We should have researched something before. But anyway, it looks cool in the pink, and I'm, I, ho I hope I see more of them yeah. around. And uh, I think Steve Ewing is testing one right now, right? Yeah, that's right. It's a frozen berry metallic one, so it's a pink... Uh, take on, which actually it doesn't look bad. Um, no, we talked about that exact configuration with uh, Golson on the last. Yeah, episode. yeah, that's right. Um, interesting proposition, and the the uh, the wheels are are those available on the current four wheel drive one? I don't recall. I'm clacking away here. Um, oh, yeah. no, I was thinking about the one that Steve Ewing was testing because the ones on the press photos are big wheels. But, like, I, it, there was uh, the one that they're testing uh, has, like, smaller wheels, which are maybe 18s, 19s. I'm not sure. What is a small mm -hmm. wheel now? Who knows? Who knows? Because uh, I'm sure, like, the ones in the press photos. Oh, which is the – no, this is, like, this is the big wheel option, which are – Yeah, I, I'm sure you can't get smaller than 19. 
I've yeah. seen like I've seen eighteen on a Macan and it looked insanely small. Oh my goodness, I couldn't Im- I couldn't imagine that. Uh, it looked good actually. Oh really? Yeah. Sidewall. Yeah. 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 It was it was good. That is interesting. Um. Anyways, speaking of forums, so <laughs> uh, if that made it into the cut, um, so I was so on the topic of forums and uh, having been in the mud, uh, I kept it on for like a, a day just because it was kind of fun to look at. But then, like, I started getting concerned. Like, oh, I wonder if like this could potentially do damage and unfortunately uh, on the topic of mudding um when you google it the most prominent forums that pop up are jeep forums and Mm -hmm. like uh there is probably no more a place on the internet to go to where people have such chips on their shoulders when answering just simple questions. Uh, like, say, for instance... Okay, I'm going to say, I, I think that's, like, all car forums, and I think you're bringing, like, a certain bias to it. Oh, no, no, no. On other car forums, I think sometimes, like, things are unsaid but can be read into. Like, literally, the forum post that I was looking at said, uh, the question posed was, uh, can I keep mud on my car I don't want it to look like a mall crawler. I want it to look tough. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's laying it out on the table, I guess. Uh, But anyways, I read about four posts down and then threw away my computer. Uh, But I did at least eke out a little bit of useful information, which is that, yes, it is a bad idea to keep uh, mud on the car. Not necessarily because of the paint, but it made sense when like mud or clay dries, it might contract. And if it's on rubber parts, like a CV boot, uh, it may potentially cause wear or damage. Mm. Uh, I don't know how accurate that information is, but it kind of makes sense. So I went and uh, got like the undercarriage uh, sprayed. Uh, I, there's still mud, though. I feel like it's going to take a while to get this mud completely off of uh, the underside of the car, but well, it's supposed to rain. So you could drive in the rain at speed and maybe it'll maybe I ran it off. through this wash like twice. Uh, oh, and wow. it got most of it off. But like when I initially drove through the undercarriage part, uh, like mud was spraying everywhere, uh, on the, in the car wash. But anyways, um, all right. So what is, what is your history of forums where did you visit uh on the internet where uh you could be your true self so i know that your history of car forums is reading them to talk yourself out of buying cars yes. like you will look at a macan and then it's like oh well i got to the 400th page in this thread and now i know that i cannot get one because oh my God. They you know, have I will mechanical actually mechanical problems. You know, you've really, done this with like every single car. Those stupid like threads that go like for like three hundred pages. I'll actually yeah. Sift but this through, is always your like, justification for why something is off limits. Maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the Macan. To be fair, like yes. Yeah. That that is like alarming. Like uh, the amount of effort that it takes to get to like the timing chain guys or whatever it was that right. uh, Jordan was describing. To be fair, I guess I also did not learn that on a forum, but rather through our friend who owns <laughs> an indie shop. Right. Um, so, yes, it's a place for uh, useful, if only sometimes accurate information. Yeah. So I, 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 had, I added this question about the history just because I, like, I only had well, what one is the, forum. What yes. is the earliest forum? One forum? That is a lie. That I was actively engaged with. Oh, dear God. Okay. Go on. Uh, do you want to guess what it was? Uh, it was probably, like, for your Ford Probe. and That is a good guess. It was probetalk.net, oh. I think it was called. And it was... How is, uh, this, how is a 17-year-old... Can you go on probetalk.net? 
dot net and just not be giggly all the time. <laughs> um, I was very serious. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely like I had dial up and I would like refresh this and I posted a fair amount and I definitely like read like the the doom scrolling quote unquote that we do or just or just looking at Twitter and waiting for new things in the feed yeah th new things to react to like i definitely did that in like dial up oh web forum like God. i would come home from school and i would just read this forum and occasionally post or reply or whatever and uh what was your screen name it was like an amalgamation of my name and the car i'm not gonna go <laughs> too far into it um because i'm sure those posts are still out there i so i was i posted on that for a while and um, I, so when I was into, when I had a motorcycle, I, so the probe forum, first of all, the probe forum was like pretty good. I think, I don't know. I mean, the internet in like 1990 or the internet in like 2001, I guess. Like, I don't know if it was, well, it was ever a much more innocent time, I guess. But I mean, you still have a bunch of like adolescent like y y boys and men just posting about cars and being like dipshit. So I'm sure it was still awful, yeah. but um, I mean, it, it seemed like a friendly enough place to geek out about these cars with a very unfortunate name. Uh, I later, I posted to, um, it was a sport bike forum, literally called like sportbikes.net. I, I engaged with that oh. for a, for like a year or two when I was into that. And then, uh, and then I never really did forums. Like I definitely had registered for a few, but I didn't, I, I never really posted much. Like I am registered. So I'm registered on, I've posted a handful of things to Pelican. I've gotten, I've had very few good interactions with Pelican. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, I think Pelican's fine, and Pelican is a lot more geared towards our cars versus like Renlist, which is more like Pelican's brand a little new bit cars more. Renlist is like what, Renlist is a little bit like what is your like? Let's com compare notes on ordering a GT2 from a dealer. Right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of tech. It's a lot of tech tips about um, choosing options. Yep. Um, and you know when you order three or four cars a year, but uh, yeah, so. Pelican was uh, is okay. <laughs> I posted one of my videos there. I got a very bad reaction from people <laughs> who thought that I didn't know anything about the car and <laughs> stuff like that. Well, it is like I will say, like uh, for our cars at least, there's like a lot of institutional knowledge uh, because the people who have been on there have been involved with like these old air cooled for decades. But the problem is that associated with that is also that they're old and. They're old know-it-alls, which is the worst combination. Yeah. And so you, this young whippersnapper, uh, with your U-2 video showing how the controls in your car work, uh, you just don't know anything. I, it's true. I don't. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thankfully, I never really interacted with any Nissan Z forums, which is probably for the best. Oh, man. I, that one I could not imagine. Uh, and then, so I, and then I've, I've looked at Prius chat when I had a Prius, I never created an account or anything. And then the, I even I've, I've referred, I've looked at IS 300 for forums. Approval. What? I even vouched for you on Prius chat. No, you didn't. Anyway. You know what they say? The first day when you come to Prius chat, you got to find like the biggest guy and kick their ass to show him you mean business. It's quite easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Surprisingly. But, and then I, I think I've complained about this recently, like the IS300 forums, <clears throat> despite this car having like a huge aftermarket and everything, um, it is such a ghost town. Like all of the... Like, it'll be like a how to, like, how to take apart your door panel or something. And I'll find this thread and all the pictures. It's from 2008, and all the photos are like, yeah. have long disappeared from photo bucket. Here's the thing is that I feel like there is some cross section with Nissan forums and uh, IS300 specific forums. I don't know. I feel like those demographics might have some convergence. Uh, you're just, you're offensively generalizing right now. I am, intentionally. Uh, uh, 
It's yeah. a good car. It's a good car. I, it's a good car. Uh, it is a car that lends itself to uh, a lot of modifications. And I'm fine with modifications, but I find that many of them are modified badly. Uh, well, that's what makes a nice, clean-looking car really special and stand out. That is true. Um, and when you get one, Ugh. a clean and well-sorted one, well, um, yes. <laughs> then uh, you could have. So, could you have joined like an MX6 forum instead of a probe forum with the mechanics? Um, have been that is a enough? good question. The probe forum was much more active because there's like. I mean, I'm sure they told they sold like it was probably five to one probe sales to MX6, and yeah. the probe was a much more enthusiast base because the so, MX6 yeah. was was like a uh, a lot more subdued. Yeah, you know, not a lot of people. I mean, there were certainly people that were enthusiasts with them, but they were generally more just like a a a nice like entry coupe. Yeah, your first nice car out of college. First job yeah. type of exactly, and so there was a lot of so there was MX the MX six people that were enthusiastic would come to the probe forum. Yeah, and there was another probe forum, and I don't remember what it was called. Probing questions, was something like that. Something like that. Um, was the first gen MX six related with like related to the probe? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, the first gen MX six and six two six. And probe were related, and the second gen MX6 wow. and probe and 626 were all related. They were so different looking. The uh, first gen, uh, the first gen MX6 and probe looked very yeah. different. Yeah, it, they, I think they did have more differences. I don't know. The second gen was also quite different looking. I guess so. Yeah, the first gen MX6 looks so like sedan turn coupe. Uh, right. Even though it wasn't, I guess. Oh no, I guess it was. It was. It was. Yeah, partially, or it was six two six based, which is also. So wait, was there an equivalent Ford sedan? Uh no. Oh. No. And, and weirdly, it's like really confusing. But even though the Contour came out, and also was a front wheel drive two point five liter V six, it like it had nothing in common. Yeah. Like it's a different V six and a different platform <laughs> uh how weird um yeah i knew one kid in high school who had an mx6 but it was in terrible condition hmm. uh anyways my form history actually is very similar to yours because we've had very similar cars uh but i was on sobnet.net <laughs> See, I think uh, the difference on. is like when you're when you're 16 and 17 you have like nothing but time yeah there's that but also like you know, this was like there was so much novelty in being in this because, you know, chat rooms were huge then. And so this is like even more specific. It is a forum uh, right. in the late 90s where you only talk about this one make or this one car. Um, right. For better or worse. But yeah, I was on Sobnet.net. Uh, I think it was just. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, that's not what it was, was it? Uh, it's. Is it what is it now? It's still a, an active form. It is sobnet.com, but I think it used to be sob.net, maybe. Uh, and so maybe they kept it or something. I don't really know. Uh, there was also like copy.com.com. Yeah, exactly. Are you familiar with that? I am because the, there is a location right next to my house. Is there more than one location? I don't know. So I just that love means that this it's is called it's called copy.com and then yeah. they're like, "Oh, well we should get a website. Then is this... copy.com taken?" This oh, literally... who knew it is. So we have to get copy.com.com. Then no one no one knows what we're talking about. Basically, there is a copy they know. shop. They know. There They've is a copy riff. shop. Uh it's basically like a Kinkos, but it's like it's near my house and it's the business name is called copy.com, but that's not their that's obviously not their website. Right. Why would it be? Yeah. Anyways, it is weird. Um, but yeah, sobnet.com uh, or sobnet.net or sob.net. I don't remember what it was, but the brand is Sobnet. And it's still alive today. And I am pretty sure this is how it appeared, like the layout. Like this is, if you go there, this is like frozen in time. Not the content, like the actual 
sight. It is so terrible. In fact, I think the images are bitmaps. Uh, Most images are... Oh, you mean like actually BMP yeah, formats. Yeah, BMPs. <laughs> uh, it is... I mean, it is... It, it, it is... It's, it's just... I can't even describe it. Anyways, you should go there. Check it out. It is... Extremely funny. They say on the internet. I'm looking at I'm looking at the probe talk forums, oh, and I like if I could search for my own name, I would, but I don't know if I can. I don't see any kind of search. I don't even remember what my um what my name would have been because like it's hard to come up with a name on a model specific or even a brand specific one. Uh, because if you want to use like you know Sob Chris. 93, a Saab Chris 900. Uh, like, someone's going to have that already. So what do you do? Uh, so I, after that, I had a Protégé 5, but I don't think I was ever on Protégé forums or Mazda forums, for that matter. Uh, mainly because nothing ever went wrong with that car. But I was also, while I liked the car, I was never, like, enthusiastic about it. So uh, I feel like... I also would be betraying my Sobnet brethren uh, mm-hmm. by going on Mazda forums. But the car I replaced that with was the Prius. So which which one were you most active on of all the forums? I wasn't active on, on any of them. Like I like I might have posted like here or there like an intro post like hey here's me and my blah 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 uh, and that'd be it. So I never really contributed to anything i i think maybe e90 post so when i replace the prius with the whoa E90. okay this is a weird sorry all I've right got whatever you. this is very important no, no so i was searching i was trying to like do like site google search whatever this is the weirdest convergence that this is why i'm interrupting you it's trust me it's much breaking more news here about. Uh, on the probe talk forums i was trying to search for like part of my name which had like 95 pgt in it very original. Mm. And I found an image of a protege a protege five with the the Mazda two point five V six, the KLDE from the probe in it. My God. Yeah. It's wild. That is wild. So uh they bumped that hundred and thirty horsepower to two hundred and thirty five. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um I would have been more impressed if they had put that uh, 1.8 liter six cylinder from the MX3. Yeah. In there. Uh, that would so have been th- down on power, I think, but yeah. Well, so this so the American engine was the KLDE, mm-hmm. but in Japan it was a, there was a KLZE which had like a different so, I mean it had tweaks throughout the motor, but it had higher compression and it was same displacement V6 2.5, but it was like 200 horsepower. Um that yeah. was always the dream. Yeah. Are people doing that now, or is it just like there are just better ways to get at power? There's got to be better ways. Like, there's probably no parts available for these things. Yeah. And just I, it's like a really annoying engine to work on because it's so stuffed in there. Yeah. And I think so. In in my recollection, um, you know, it was mostly kind of inexpensive, except labor was a total pain. But like all the accessories were expensive. So yeah. like I I think I had like, you know, I think my AC condenser went out. It was like a five or six hundred dollar part or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's. Uh, I can't speak for what the situation is, but I don't know why people would stick to this. I just don't. I mean, you don't see these cars on the road, like a, a you know, any kind of probe or Mazda of that era. That's no. not like a collector's item. Is I, just. I take not a picture every time I see a Protege Five. I take a picture of it, uh, just because like I won't see another one for like three years um also they haven't aged very well unfortunately they're not bad looking cars but they look so much smaller now than they did back then uh and not quite as fluid a design as i like i liked the way that car looked a lot then i i love like the little arrow kit on it like it was such a good um looked like a little rally car yeah um it wasn't a bad car like i said like it was insanely reliable uh and i had it i had it in the manual and the manual was fine um oh it was 98 yeah there was a much worse one before that 
or was that? Yeah, there was a, another gen before it was yeah, the yeah. three two three, or after it was the three, uh, three two three. I I had the zoom zoom sticker. I never put it on though. The dealer gave it to me when I Ooh. bought the car. Um. And, anyways. So yes. Uh, Are we back to regular programming after? No, no, no. We're back to this forum. So that was news. also you were on. You were pretty active on pro on uh, Prius chat. I was not active on Prius chat. I and I I like I modified the Prius a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, it had Scion TC wheels. Uh, and I was maybe maybe on occasion uh, on hypermiling. Sure. Uh, threads, uh, because I was able to get it. Like mine was a oh six, and so it was rated for like forty eight city, I think, at that time. That was the adjusted EPA. That was right around the time the EPA had like adjusted their calculations, and so it dropped from like sixty to forty eight or something like that. No, forty eight was something. Uh, mm-hmm. anyways, I was able to actually get it up to. 60 mpg in the city almost um and that got boring after about a month or so and that's when i put on the scion tc wheels uh just because i wasn't getting bored with the car and again it was more of a political statement at the time uh than it was a an engaging car choice and so i was trying to make it something a little bit more i ordered a bunch of jdm parts for it including like the factory EV button, which you could not, uh, so that gen here, you could not manually engage EV mode. Uh, you can only creep along at a low speed, but with this button, you could engage it just like you can with like basically any hybrid now. Um, but for some reason they wouldn't let you do it then. Uh, oh my God. I know this is earth shattering news. I was, I will say that when I, first drove uh, that second gen Prius for the first time in 04 at a press conference uh, with like, I was, uh, I was shooting photos of a press conference of Texas mayors who were getting together to talk about like all basically green cars. And uh, I drove an 04 Prius for the first time and it was kind of wild because like i'd never driven an ev before that uh so like that kind of like silent takeoff was so strange uh Mm -hmm. and futuristic but anyways uh that was a short-lived ownership experience and then i got the 330i so i how short-lived i had it for uh three years it's long by today's standards because I haven't kept a car longer than two years in the last six years, <laughs> but um, whatever. So I had the E90 after that, uh, and I, I was on E90 post, but I wasn't, like, again, like, active on there. Uh, that car, there were things, like, I wanted to either modify or fix myself when things went wrong. Um, so... I would just be on there for, I don't even think I created an account. I just like, uh, was on there. And then, uh, with the Cayman, I guess I was on, I would like, I was on Renlist and, uh, Pelican, but Pelican had more like old car info, I guess. Uh, and they were fine. Uh, they were like a million. Oh, I was on planet nine. I forgot about that. Oh, is that like the one that's like, is that just like Boxster Cayman? Or yeah, no? it's Boxster Cayman only. And uh, the story was that like they had called it like Cayman Net or something like that. And Porsche went after them and said, you can't name it after the car that you're talking about. And so they changed it to Planet Nine. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, and... Uh, I refused to be on a Lexus forum <laughs> for the, uh, I never got anything like, yeah, with the, the nine eleven obviously like, just like you, uh, Pelican and Renlist and were like weird UK forums where like, 
Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Like, there are like UK specific forums where yeah. there's just like I'll come across off them when I'm trying to ask questions and I'll, I'll search and I'll find those. Yeah. Um, I've like, there is like a slight translation pro- like issue sometimes. They really do like use very different nomenclature uh, for certain things. Uh, there's no, there's no forum for the Celsius. Uh, I guess it, it would just be like a Lexus forum, but again, yeah. I refuse to go on those because it's, strange uh it's the big one is club lexus i think and i just refuse yeah. uh, I, I see that i see that for like sport cross like or for is 300 you know things that i search for i, I mean, mean it just seems like a forum to me i mean as far as that car yeah it's less enthusiast though and more broad ownership i guess uh chatter and so you know like what's how's what's the best way to uh bring out the gold in your badge um <laughs> so so uh, but for the lx i go to i i hate mud <laughs> which is i actually have an account on there although i've never posted oh my god yeah uh but that that is actually what are we going to send someone useful. that finds your account if we if a listener can find your account what are we going to send them oh god well since i haven't posted i i will send you like a hundred dollars <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, if you can actually find it, but... Does uh, that go for me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you now, this is a cheat, so this negates the $100. So the $100 uh, is off, but I, I'm polar silver on there. So uh, a little nod to nothing. Oh, God. Because I don't. my car is not even polar silver. Um, I had to make up something. I did not want to make up, like, you know, 100 lover or, like, you know, LX, but actually LC which is probably too long. Uh, I don't know. So Okay, you're embarrassing yourself. I know. Uh, that is actually a pretty useful forum, though. Like, There's a lot of uh, DIY and technical stuff on there. So People are generally what, pretty friendly. What do we think is the worst forum? Like, I think uh, we were somehow, we were talking about, this came up, we, we were talking about like infinity forums or something. Or I'm going like, to say Tesla forum because, because okay. um, yes. you... Since no problems ever exist for with Teslas, as they are the perfect vehicle, um, yeah. as is the uh, description on teslafan.net. Okay. Dot com. Uh, <laughs> and you are not allowed to complain on that forum, or you will be banned and your post obliterated into oblivion. Um. Uh, that is probably the worst forum. I can't imagine, like, because, yeah. you know, you go you go to a forum, one, to find community, you know, to, to talk about the shared cars, uh, a shared car interest, but also, usually people go to forums because they have a question uh, about an issue they're having or, like, they want to do this or do that. And I cannot think of another brand right now whose, like, biggest fans are like aggressively shut down conversation about any negative conversation about any of the brand or the products themselves. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine like someone saying like, well, my roof flew off. Like, what should I do? Like, (laughs) can you imagine that conversation? You would not find a solution to like, take this post down. Some journalist is going to see this. (laughs) Yeah, basically. So that's my declaration that it's a Tesla forum. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really can't disagree. Uh, I would say that, or yeah, I mean, like, Infinity or something, where yeah. it's people that, like, are really convinced that they got the best, and they don't want to hear otherwise. That would be the smug... And, and then you just have this echo chamber yeah. of, like, near-luxury whatever. Yeah. It just seems... Well, yeah, it it's seems like... seems like a weird it like, is an, part of the world. It is a car or a brand with many compromises uh and well like i think you you're basically you've you're describing it accurately what makes for a terrible forum in its smugness about what you have uh like whether like the prius forums were terrible because sometimes they'd be really useful but other times it was just someone saying like how it's actually saving the planet and like this is the like only choice in car you should make, et cetera, et cetera. Like where it's just like, this is not, I was just asking about like 
you know, what, what's everyone getting as far as like a full tank goes or something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, or best tires, whatever. Uh, and someone will like, will interject with like absolutely useless commentary about how it's the best car for no reason at all. But I still think that kind of smugness is not I think you'd as find insufferable that... as like the and I'm I'm just I'm just offering another yeah. thing as like the renless smugness of like, yes, well, you see that in my signature? That is my PTS GT two that I've ordered. Uh it's coming in May. Can't wait to show you guys pictures in May. And this is all in an email signature or a post signature. And it's just like the like at least with Prius chat, you don't have like the financial smugness of like yeah. You know, well, there's yeah, the, like, I, I the, brought in a I brought in a mill this quarter, and you're okay. gonna hear well, about it. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> there is a uh, financial bro section that you can opt out of, uh, <laughs> our finance bro. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, like th- the most obnoxious financial bro that's driving a Prius is probably not that obnoxious. <laughs> that I think is an oxymoron as far as concepts go. I could not have right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm sure that was more of a thing in like 2009 when there wasn't really other options. Okay. So if you, you know what I mean? Like it's but, like, yeah. It, but now imagine the finance bro on a Tesla forum. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Imagine, imagine the, like, there's not even a Bitcoin section. It's like a Bitcoin, like it's like, there's like 15 subtopics in the oh, Bitcoin yeah. section. Finance bro working for a tech firm. Trading crypto. <laughs> Trading crypto. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> his Model X. Uh, oh, my God. Well, because he wouldn't be, like, caught dead in a Model 3. Uh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, I, <laughs> that sounds... That just sounds awful. I actually... I, like... I was looking up just, like, common problems. Like, with any car that I'm curious about, like, I'll look up just what common problems are. And I think I did notice that the big Tesla forum is a part of the Tesla website. So I think... What, really? I think it might be. Uh, That seems a little on the nose. Which I was going to say, like, this is very on the nose for the brand, or very on brand. Um, It is. It's Uh forums.tesla.com. While you were talking about something boring earlier... Oh God. I was looking up Ford probe engine swaps and I found a <laughs> while you were I talking found... earlier I was playing this song in my head and <laughs> I was talk- I'm sorry we were talking about chocolate yes. um, I was I found a probe GT that uh, no a probe the first gen probe yes with a uh, Taurus show v6 Ooh. swapped in Ooh, that'd be really cool it's pretty cool yeah. it's pretty cool but then I found on another one is a second gen GT with the original engine swapped from transverse to longitudinal wow and i i don't know and it has the it has a miata transmission to the rear wheels wow okay and presumably diff and stuff so it's a rear wheel drive probe that with is the original so much effort it is it is so much effort to not go fast yeah <laughs> like and to still have a probe oh my god wow i mean i guess yeah for some, this is like solving a thirty thousand so piece actually, puzzle. So I actually, actually, I'm I'm going back to this. I actually like, I think I I met up with people a few times, like IRL. I so I did this thing. Okay, I did this thing when I had this car when I was in high school, where I would like buy a part for upgrades for an aftermarket, and then yeah. like not be able to install it or something, and just sell it or something. This happened like several times. Anyway, I sold. Um, Springs. You to couldn't someone. return it to the J.C. Whitney catalog. <laughs> I sold, I sold a part to someone, and he had a uh, a Pro GT with nitrous and the the ZE swap what? engine. Yeah, oh and it was God. crazy. I rode in it. It was like extremely fast. Yeah. That was very cool. I rode in. I rode in a, and I no no no. Maybe he had. So I rode in one that had a ZE and the nitrous, and yeah. then I rode in one that was turbocharged and both were very cool wow for me yeah uh, not to anyone else <laughs> that is that would be obscenity talk on sobnet.com yeah there were no such modifications on there uh 
Well, it came with a turbo standard. Did, I bet someone turbocharged the V6 for some like godforsaken reason. I bet someone I has done it. I don't think so. Yeah, so like as a reminder, I had the SE V6, which is a 2.5 liter from GM, and it was awful. Uh, both our first cars had 170 horsepower. Uh, 2.5 V6. Yeah, but mine like did not was not able to fully utilize that considering that uh i had the auto as my first car and that was zero to 60 in like nine seconds and the manual it was zero to 60 in seven seconds that is a huge disparity that is a big disparity yeah anyways um yeah uh sobnet dot Whatever. Seven is pretty quick for a so- like for a car that was probably a lot more luxurious than the. That Pro. was the the V six was the premium. That must have been the car and driver time. Yeah, I, I think it was the car and driver time, uh, which is abysmal. Of uh, nine seconds was the car and driver time for the auto, but well, they can't grind gears, so they can't they can't have much of an advantage. <laughs> that is true. Like there's uh, not as much of a difference they can make up with but destroying the, thing, the car. The, the turbo was actually cheaper than the v6 but it was faster it was zero to 60 in six and a half seconds oh wow yeah so there was like almost no reason to get a v6 i think that was just like an american marketing exercise like you Probably. have to offer a v6 and then people will buy it right uh otherwise um it's just like oops i've just uh i like do you, that's why they had like the 530i e34 right it was basically a marketing exercise if you're gonna Probably. buy a, you know, an ex- an executive sedan, it has to offer a V8, even if it is a uh, small, small displacement, small power, cheaper V8. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, um, in other news, although this is old news now, <laughs> uh, both of us being uh, designers. Uh, we have opinions about uh, the new GM logo. Oh, right. Yeah. This will be a good topic to wrap up with. Yeah, I think so. Just vent our frustration. We, already, frustration. Like, we can sum it up as that we don't like it. It is awful. Um, right. We have to s- explain why. Yeah. So if you, I'm sure anyone listening has seen it already because it was like uh, a a pretty good topic for like two or three days straight at least or if not a week straight uh on the internet uh it looks like an app icon but not like a current day app icon uh it is lowercase g and m with the dash that formerly uh, basically boxed out and underlined gm all caps now just underneath the M to form what they say is a plug. And right. if you squint... Which doesn't work. Yeah. I feel like they did that because it's really easy to unplug that meaning if it doesn't work out. So Right. No, I mean, the problem is, like, if it was... um, Like, that that metaphor does not work at all because this M is asymmetrical. <laughs> Yes, and a plug is not asymmetrical. So if they had made this a completely symmetrical M, I could have seen that, but they didn't. It's yeah. like straight on one side and curved on the other, so it so it you know pairs tighter with the G. So it's like do one or the other. Yeah, you know, like have it integrate with the G or make it a plug. But it like is just yeah, it is a really half-hearted thing. But they showed it. Um, they sh- I mean. The fundamentals are bad, absolutely. We will agree on that, and we agree on all of this. The fundamentals are bad, but if they had shown it not with a gradient, not with a drop shadow, like yeah. it w- or the bevel and emboss, sorry, it would have been a little bit better, but they show it in this just really cheesy... It's so cartoony. Like, gradient and, and bevel and just like... It's, it's all the filters. So goofy. Uh, it's, like, exactly. And that's the strange thing, because that must mean that part of the strategy like their branding strategy was like, we have to show it like this for a reason. And their reasons like war must have been so forced. Uh, like, I mean, like the symbolism is really forced on this graphic anyways. And as like graphic designers, I think you and I could both agree that like 
if you can't make it actually clever, just make it right. Like just yes, type set yes. it right. Well, and leave well it said. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it's not like a brilliant thing, just make it good. Yeah. Like make sure good. your the fundamentals are fine. Like the the characters being of such like differing widths is so bothersome and like yeah. and because they where the where the G chooses to end the tail yeah is is weird. It's so bad. Like it's just it doesn't look like a G. It doesn't you know it, it's just it's uh yeah. Like, like this was just change for no reason. Exactly, it doesn't make it look better. It doesn't make it look modern. It makes it look like a 2008 yeah. logo that would be scorned on brand new. And I'd be reading this from my drafty apartment, and, fuming and shaking my fist, which is what I did uh, anyway. And there were many mild defenders of like the new logo by way of. There were not many divi- many defenders. Uh, okay, well I'll say this: like uh, people try to provide a counterbalance like what was so great about the old one and there was nothing like like revolutionary and i tweeted about this just like that the G- the old gm logo was fine people were saying like oh you know it's so boring there was nothing like great about it and there wasn't like anything revolutionary about it but it was actually a pretty tightened up type exercise at least mm-hmm. and it was it was meant to be like this corporate brand identity that represented like basically what would be an American monolith. And I think it did that very well. And it was designed by uh, Alan Pekulik, who was like a prolific uh, typographer and designer. And so... Yeah, you showed other examples of his work. It was really cool. We'll link to that tweet. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. And But anyways, so like, while again, yeah, it wasn't revolutionary. It And it, it's not something that someone hang, would hang up on a wall. But like, I think it is... Uh, a lot better, like, than the current one because, like, it's not trying to do anything, and this one is trying so hard, and it's not succeeding at it at all. Right. But and the old one is it. basically so. The old one's basically been around. I'm looking at a timeline since 1964, so it's six almost 60 years. Yeah. And then they change it for this app icon yeah basically like just for no reason it's like this like app- trend of the week to show that like to show half-hearted people who aren't paying attention that we're kind of serious about yeah. maybe doing an ev not even an like a a current day app, app icon which is like the irony they're trying to look like they're in with the times as far as technology goes and yeah it's like web 2.0 <laughs> it's so bad and you did a uh you did a reaction version yourself and it was gm comic and comic sans, sans. And, and everyone said it was better <laughs> it was better <laughs> um yeah so that's that i think that is also a podcast so, I think so thanks for listening all do follow us on the social media at new for 96 on instagram uh same on twitter and do email us. We won't open it, but Gmail will read it. So, I might open it. Yeah, maybe. It's hard to say. Yeah. New for 96 all spelled out at gmail.com. All right. Thanks well, for listening. Bye. Goodbye.